If you want to pump your body and expand your mind, there's only one place to go. Mind Pump. Mind Pump. With your hosts, Sal Stefano, Adam Schaefer, and Justin Andrews. In this episode of Mind Pump. Maybe one of the shortest intros we've done in a long time. Yeah, 30 minutes. Might have something to do with the temperature in this room. It could be. Is that what it was? It could be that again. Uh, for the first 30 minutes, we do our introductory conversation. We talk about Adam's move. He's moving into a new house. Yeah. Um, and his restocking of cleaning products. He went from the chemical-based cancer stuff. Thrive Market, take care of me. And now is buying the all-natural stuff from Thrive Market. Now, Thrive Market is the largest online retailer of non-GMO and organic food products. They also have cleaning products. They have cosmetic products. They have they have stuff for pets, right? They have yeah, dog food, stuff food. like that. Got me some dog food. And here's what we did. We negotiated a phenomenal... Uh, deal for our listeners. If you go to thrivemarket.com forward slash mind pump, you're going to get a month free membership and $20 off your first three orders of $49 or more and free shipping. Then we talk about and? baseball cards. Uh, we always used to collect those when we were kids. Uh, Adam, you had like, I don't know, hundreds of thousands of dollars worth and I yeah. lost them all. Yeah. And Sal just collected <laughs> Tim Brown. That's yeah, it. Tim Brown's the other one. <laughs> we talked about Justin's new PRX <laughs> horses. Uh, home gym system. PRX home gym systems are awesome. The the rack that he got actually is very sturdy, but it folds into the wall or kind of goes flat to the wall, so you you maximize your space. Great That's new right. sponsor for us. There, yeah, we are working oh, with super P- excited about it, and we got you guys a hookup. So if you go to prxperformance.com forward slash mind pump and use the promo code mind pump, you'll get five percent off and a free Maps Prime mm. program. With purchases of over five hundred dollars, but if you have a, if you want a home gym, they're the best. They're one you of the can best pretty ones. much do all our maps yep. programs with this setup. Yep, we talked about Santa Barbara trip uh, and a few other things there. Doug just scrolled down, can't see him. Oh, kids, <laughs> texting and social media, and then we get into the questions. The first question was, Dude, this person's nineteen years old, coming off a cut, Wait for wants it. to bulk, wants to know the most effective way to bulk. Now, bulking is when you're trying to put on lean body mass or muscle, uh, you can do it in an effective way or you can just get fat. <laughs> Find out which one Good you're doing dirty bulk. in this part of this episode. This next person wants to know how they should approach someone in the gym who has horrible form. Or not. Or yeah. do you approach this person? Point you, and laugh. Do you just let the <laughs> chips <laughs> fall? <laughs> they, yeah. Or do what Justin just said? <laughs> I'm a dick. The next question was, uh, most NFL offensive linemen have lost 50 or more pounds with just in a few months of retiring, what are the long-term effects of force-feeding your body to be above 300 pounds? We talk about the dangers of playing in the NFL, the dangers of being that big, and maybe the benefits of being that big, especially when you're getting hit by people who are running at you like a car. Yeah, you're going to die. And the final question, how do you negotiate effectively for a raise? There's some good wisdom in this part of the episode. Also, I'd like to mention... Maps Performance, Maps Green. This is the first Maps program that Adam, Justin, and I created together. It was the first collaboration the that we collab. did. This is a program that is excellent for building muscle, burning body fat, but also to get your body to move like an ancient athlete. What does that mean? Well, an ancient athlete, especially in the early days of the Olympics, was supposed to be able to do everything. Jump, run, lift, wrestle, fight. I mean, you want – it's basically full-spectrum – athletic performance. Well, that's math performance. That's what it's designed for. We took the price and we cut it in half. It's 50% off, but you have to use the code GREEN50. If you don't use that code, you won't get the 50% off. All one word. GREEN50, no space, at checkout at mindpumpmedia.com for the 50% off. We also have bundles that are available. Uh, The bundles are where we combine multiple math programs. We put them together and we discount them wrap it up and they're usually put together for a particular goal or reason like we have the build your butt bundle we have the sexy athlete bundle and we have the super bundle which is a year of exercise programming so you can find all the bundles and the 50 percent off maps performance use the code green 50 at mindpumpmedia.com dude uh how's your uh how's your moving going adam oh, man. <laughs> in your three-story house bro <laughs> I hate moving so bad. Dude, it's three levels, not including the garage's level. So it's technically four. Oh, shit. You go one, two, three, four. And it's. So you have to go up all those stairs. To get to your bedroom at the very top or what? Oh, yeah. Yeah. All the rooms. So there's three bedrooms upstairs. And then 
then it has like a little corner you turn and come down. Dude, it's been a it's been a long long 24 hours for me right now. But I, and right now too, so we just I I took care of all the the big rocks, right? Everything's unpacked, the rooms are set up. You know, we have some we have a couple things in boxes still that we'll eventually unbox. But now it's like all the other stuff that's a pain in the ass. Like you forget about like uh Comcast and your your oh, oh it's a nightmare right you got to change a mailing yeah. address all those things like that I have, I mean I forgot about my my Thrive Market mailing stuff because I have stuff that's being shipped to me for, uh, I, I had a I ordered a bunch of cleaning supplies and things like that for the house to get going I got my butcher bot all my stuff that's all on auto I have to go and go change. are you ordering a bunch of new cleaning supplies and stuff now because you're I always do that when I move yeah so I made so I made Katrina I shouldn't say made I. Katrina and I decided I didn't make her do anything. I, I directed do yeah. this. Her, her and I decided that we would, you know, get rid of most everything that we had. Now, we, for the most part, we saved the the big stuff, but even not even the furniture. I mean, we got rid of almost everything. And so, food in the refrigerator and things that were cleaning supplies that was half full. It's like just we're dumping it. We're just going to mm-hmm. do trash and then we'll just buy new stuff. And so. Yeah, no, we redid all that stuff. So I did. I Good. didn't. So I now had, you're fully out of all the the crazy chemical cleaners, and you're getting the natural. Yeah, I did Thrive yeah. Market stuff. Yeah, no, no. Good. And now I look Smart. like now I look like we're fully. I mean, my whole cupboard like fully sponsored. It's not there. It's supposed to come. I think in the next day or two. I know Katrina set it all up, but that's the stuff we're doing today. Now is getting all our address stuff changed mm-hmm. over to the house and last. So last what did she have to do by herself when you were? So, because we were up, we were down in Santa Barbara doing our thing. Oh man, and I just mm. felt, I felt miserable. And she had to do it all. I like, felt mm. so bad. Thankfully, she has brothers. Yeah, she has two brothers that are amazing too. Like, shout out to them. I know Larry; he listens to the show. I love you, brother. And then uh, his brother Andy, who is just her brother Andy, has been like, he's like a master of. You guys remember the couch that I had upstairs in my house? Do you remember the big mm. yeah, 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 custom yeah, yeah. couch? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right. Okay. So I don't know if you guys realize this or not, but you can't take that up the stairs. So we have to scale it over oh. that wall and down. So I came home the day before we left. So would you tie ropes to it and stuff? Or just- so yeah. So this is what this is literally what happens to me two days ago. I come home and I open the door and I hear him go, "Oh, hey, is that you, brother?" And I'm like, and I look around the corner and there's my couch fucking hanging hanging from the <laughs> the wall. And it's like tilting, and it looks like it's going to fall over. I'm like, oh, shit. I go sprinting up the stairs. Yeah. I've got one of my brothers who's holding on to the couch, and the other one has got a rope around his waist, and it's harnessed on the other side of this freaking- On his waist? Yes. That's not oh, that safe. 300 pounds. thing goes down, man, he's Oh, yeah. And he's, and he's you know leaning back on it, and they were trying to do it all by themselves. I caught them in the middle of that. Wow. And then- You came home at the right moment. Oh, right time. I But- Dude, he's a G when it comes to like packing things. I mean, it's crazy. He packed so well though that I was unpacking last night and this morning, and I was like, I was, I finished. I thought I finished my shoes right, <clears throat> and I was like, oh my god, this took forever to to do the shoes. The shoes because you can only carry. So, you uh, can only, how many pairs of shoes? I don't know. Let's dude. be honest. Okay. Yeah, you do <laughs> more than a hundred, less than five hundred. That's a huge range. Uh, yeah, it's, it's it's definitely it's well over a hundred. It's so you're under, probably like two to three hundred pairs. Yeah, probably mm. so probably around three hundred and something. If I had of to guess. shoes, yeah, and they're in plastic boxes and and or the original boxes they come in. So do you think that's a there's a there's a little bit of a, a dysfunction, little, a little obsessive, <laughs> <laughs> a little do you obsessive. have a problem. Well, <laughs> and and so I, I agree with you there. So I was getting rid of it like i was purging today like okay i don't i haven't wore those in over a year like they can go you know what i'm saying if it's a shoe that i if i haven't wore it in like over a year and it's not like a really rare shoe i'll i'll just i let them go so i actually got rid of probably i don't know 30 pairs today so you're down to 300 (laughs) (laughs) but dude carrying up you know, I, you felt every single one of those shoes. Oh, I did. You're yeah. like, yeah, I, I, giving it, them out. It was like that. It's kind of weird. Crying. Yeah, yeah. it's kind of weird how I, how I am with, with the, <laughs> they sitting now, the sneakers. <laughs> I remember when I was looking at pictures of them. Yeah. 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 When you guys were kids, you weren't into sneakers at all like that? No, Not really. No, I wasn't that. Not like, like that. I was. I had like certain ones but that I worked towards getting, but like it was only maybe like five. You know, like I could probably count That's them. the most pairs of shoes so I've So when I was had, a kid, like I only had a couple too. So I always had like the sh- pair of shoes that I got for the whole year 
And then I had like a basketball pair of shoes. Right. And, and then maybe a nice pair for like right. when yeah, you were always suit. cleats or something functional like basketball shoes. Right. And I just, you know, the ones that were really nice shoes, especially my basketball shoes, they only touched the court. Like I would never mm-hmm. let them get out. And I, like, I kept them up. I did that. Yeah. yeah. I cleaned them every time I brought them back in. So I was. Because it makes you play better, right? Yeah. 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 <laughs> Isn't that the science? And tie them real tight up top. Yeah. That was my thing. Did you, what did you, did you guys collect things when you were kids? Is there anything that you collected? Baseball like, cards, shoes. Well, shoes was now, right? Mm-hmm. So baseball cards. Um, I used to collect uh, 50 cent and silver oh, dollars. I, used to I had do a that. coin collection too. Yeah. Wow. Where is my coin collection? I know, right? I wonder. I think my. Parents took it. That's the one that's thieves. worth money because yeah. it is money. <laughs> yeah, you know, inherently. I had fi- I, had I had so 50. many silver dollars. I have pure silver dollars. Yeah. I had a couple. Yeah. Of I had like silver. each year. That's what I had. Like I had, really? I had one of those little books that unfold, and then the pieces oh, wow, go in a book. Wow. Yeah, had, it was it, in it was made it was made for, and you you collect each year. Oh, mm. and I my I my most valuable you know, collection was probably my comic book collection. I have yeah. comic books that are worth hundreds of dollars by themselves. Wow. Yeah, I have one where the the Hulk. The Gray Hulk uh, kills the Abomination. I have another one where the Gray Hulk and the Green Hulk combine to become the New Hulk. That was a kind of a big one. Oh wow! Superman's death. I had a lot one. of the Punisher War journals and all that kind of stuff. I, you know what? My most valuable collection was um, these baseballs that I would get signed because I was good friends with Jim Lefevre and his family, mm. and so they he used to give me tickets on the third baseline. And so we'd sit with all the players' wives. And one time he let me come down to the dugout. I was a kid. I was probably like nine years old or something. And uh, this is like during playoffs, right, when they, they won the the pennant, I guess you call it. Mm-hmm. And um, I'm in there, and everybody he got everybody to sign it for me. Like Jose Canseco. He's got Carney Lansford. Uh-huh. He's got like the entire team. And I hold this thing like it's the Holy Grail, you know. Like, I still have it. You just reminded me of a crazy story. So when I was a kid, my first baseball game, no, I take that back. My first baseball game was in fourth grade. My best friend's parents took me to it. The first time my parents ever took me to a baseball game was for a birthday of mine. Back then, this is like fifth grade, fifth or sixth grade, I was a Dodger fan. And they took me down to LA to go to a game. That was like my big birthday, and I got to bring a friend. And what they did was they tried to surprise me by, they got into my baseball card collection and they got like all of my Dodger cards. And supposedly they had some sort of a connection and somebody was going to get all these cards signed. And I had like the Silver Slugger, Daryl Strawberry and Mike Piazza and like Caros. Was, it, was, it, was like, it Score, Don Russ? I had all, I, have, I collected oh, everything, okay. right? So I had, I had a, but these cards were worth Upper good X. money, right? And then my parents were going to get them signed for me. But they got hustled by somebody. Uh-oh. So they, they gave away like 30 of my best cards that I had that were What if God- they sold your cards and didn't tell me that? <laughs> <laughs> right. What if they- Don't say that. Right. That could totally oh, be true. What if your parents are like, oh. how are we going to pay for this horse? Oh, yeah. <laughs> I know. <laughs> Fuck you, bro. <laughs> yeah. I've got oh, it. Yeah. man. Oh, you know, uh, Cassie wants a horse. We, you yeah. know, we can't. I don't know if we can do it. <laughs> Sell his baseball cards. Who cares about this? Bail what are we going to really tell adding him? up. <laughs> yeah. Oh, my God. I'm just kidding. What if that was true? Did I just break your heart oh, right you now? You did. Oh. For, like, for, uh, it's, it skip, it skipped Tory a beat right there. I thought, oh, shit, man. Did he really? <laughs> That's, that's, that is so possible. <laughs> but yeah, what were the brands? They were very plausible. What were the brands? It was Score, Donruss, Tops. I yeah. think that was upper, it. Upper Deck. Upper Deck was the expensive was the, ones. Yeah, right, I, right. I, I tried to collect as many as those as I could, though, because I had the kit. Like, my goal in life was to collect Ken Griffey Jr. cards. I don't know why. <laughs> why? Why? I don't know. Because I, had, I, mean, I had a bunch of his. It was like- Well, he was the man when we were He kids. was the man. And, he, and I was an A's fan, but like I knew how valuable, like his card was like super valuable at the time. So I would trade kids, like if they had a Ken Griffey card, like all of my cards for just the one card. So wow. I, I had a thing like for Tim, Tim Brown. I don't know why I had a bunch of Tim Brown cards. Remember Tim Brown? Yeah, yeah, of course. Man, why? Yeah, I don't know. <laughs> why Tim Brown? You know what I think it was? I think it's, I just automatically, for whatever reason, I, de- I like had a, a lot of like cards. like an anti-Rice guy or something when that was the idea? No, mm. maybe. I had no idea. I just, uh, for whatever, I had a lot of his cards. <laughs> so I'm like, oh, cool. I like, it's easy to remember. Tim yeah, Brown. Tim Brown. I, I guess. Remember that one. Su- super easy. Which one was the one that had the gum in there that that would cut your face? Yeah, it was Don Russ. That was tops. No, it was tops. Huh? Tops. That was tops. Yeah, you're right. That, and, that was gu- that was sharp gum that would you didn't chew it, you like shattered that, that it. Bazooka, bazooka Joe. Dude, it like would chip no, it was gum. a thin. You don't remember? <laughs> it was that. a thin pink pink gum 
that you bite into and it would shatter oh, in your yeah, mouth. Yeah, yeah. yeah it was so, so you had it shards was so of gum dry in your mouth, drying out on the cardboard. And then you would finally, yeah, you finally. <laughs> who who would have? Who would have thought if you put a piece of gum in with a bunch of cards that they would absorb <laughs> yeah. any sort of moisture in the in the gum? Turn into some <laughs> shitty paper. What a weird marketing ploy! Like, how are we going to get kids to oh, buy baseball? Oh, brilliant! Cards? Yeah, it was put brilliant. Put gum in there. It was brilliant, yeah, though. Yeah. I wonder why they don't do that. We'll anymore. start doing that with maps programs. Yeah. <laughs> put a piece of yeah, gum. Yeah, some gum. Let's get some gum with your program. That some might work. Hard Not gum. a bad idea. When I was a kid, we used to we used to go down to a place called it was Circle K was the liquor store, and we used to ride our bike down there, and I would I would take a dollar and I would get. Two decks of cards, which I think was twenty five cents back then. I want to say it was twenty five cents or fifty cents for a package of cards, and then I, and then I would get five uh, cinnamon toothpicks. They were a nickel a nickel for the package. You guys didn't get those. You remember yeah. those? Little- Wait, cinnamon toothpicks? Yeah, they were toothpicks. Were you that asshole that would just chew yeah, on it? He was, think that he was guy. cool. Yeah. Totally. Yeah, he was oh, okay. That guy. Totally. So you just you were like. I'm 13? Like, yeah, I'm like wore 12. fedora yeah. hats and yeah. fucking toothpicks. Yes. Yeah, that's that's Adam. For, for sure. Yeah. I used to save up. If I just found a quarter in the in the, in the the couch, I would walk my ass all the way to the express market to play Street Fighter. One quarter. I'd walk all the way over there. Yeah. I'd put it in and I'd play. And then inevitably some kid would beat me. <laughs> yeah, and it was always some younger kid. You, one quarter, that's all you're going to I would walk there? all the way over there for with a quarter <laughs> just to play one game of Street Fighter. That's how much I like that game. Yeah. So anyway. Justin, how's your your equipment setup oh, did going? Did you get the so PRX? Set, yeah, yeah. I got, so I, got, I ordered the PRX and I cleared out this entire room for it, and I'm devoting it completely to to training in there. And I'm so so excited about it. I get everything came and and came in a timely manner, and I just uh, I realized that uh, what I ordered, what I wanted was a pull up bar with the squat rack, and didn't realize, and they had highlighted this on the website, and I missed it that. Um, it basically adds another two feet and my, it doesn't clear my ceiling. So how tall is it? So, Oh, is it add because it, 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 locks it up. lifts up. Oh, it so folds up what people need up. to know, which is, it's a great, I mean, it, everything that, that, that came and I got bars and I got uh, stuff for Courtney too. Like I got a, a 35 pound bar. We have um, racks and stuff to be able to hang them vertically on the wall. So everything's like, nicely like compartmentalized where's it going in your house it's going it's so it's in this room that's downstairs which i don't have like a a basement or a garage or anything so uh, i really just converted this room that was kind of like a storage room for the same one that you put all the climbing shit into yes oh okay so 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 yeah so it's gonna be like right next to so my kids use that to kind of do the climbing wall they do pull-ups and stuff with the rings that that are all hanging from the ceiling and so i'm gonna be working out like right next to them and uh so it's nice because it'll fold straight out, so and then it'll collapse to the wall. So it's like doesn't like Dude, obstruct these, a lot. They're of They're brilliant. Room. These are brilliant because they they fold flat against the wall. Yeah, and you can pull them out. They're sturdy. You can load them with a lot of weight. Mm-hmm. Uh, it's like the ultimate home gym because the rack that, that it's I like have, ready set go. Because I would see the rack that I have in the in, in my place is it's a it's a rack. That's it. They mm-hmm. can't do anything with it. So, so you can never park your car in there. I can park one car now. That's right. It. So one car has to park on the street. But if I had the PRX one. I'd be able to f- fold them back in when I was done, Dude, put everything up against the and wall. And they have a lot of cool options. So, like, I got um, these. Uh, they're basically, like, it holds the, the bar vertically, so you can actually mount the bar. So, it actually, even then, the bar doesn't take up a lot of space either. It just goes straight up. So, um, they're, they're really smart mm-hmm. about how you, you storage, like, how you, how you basically organize it all so it's, isn't, like, out of the way. Isn't that the company you found on Shark Tank? Yeah. Oh, Yeah. Yeah, dude, I love that show. Dude. Uh, every now and then, some some gems will come through, and and I saw that and was like, oh shit, that's a great idea. Like, I would love to have that in my house because mm. I don't have a garage, you know. And it, I'm sure it works even better if you have a garage. You can do like the ones that have the um, the extra high bar, mm. so you can do like. So what are you doing? Are they sending you shorter pieces? Yes. Yeah, so okay. and what's great is they handle it right away. They're like, oh yeah, you know, here's what you do. Like, so they give me like new slips so I can ship those back and they replace the new ones. So. Um, I'm waiting on those, but I'm gonna get that hopefully mm. done by the end of this week. I don't know, man. You were gonna that was that was you were banking on that to, for this contest. Right? <laughs> <laughs> that rack in there to. Uh, so what, are you, what are you gonna do now? Uh, I'm just lifting. I'm lifting what I got in yeah. there, man. I got I got bars and weights, dude, dude. That's all I need. Did you know he's lost seven pounds already, Adam? 
seven more, or is that total? Total. Okay. Seven total. Yeah. He was down five last week. Right? Yeah, so yeah, he's so dropped so another, another two. two. He's okay. doing. He's not doing bad at all. Look at you. He's, it's only, what seven pounds? What do you think? I already, pounds, I already told you how, pounds of muscle. I already told you how this is going to go down. <laughs> yeah. Justin's going to lose because he's going to try too hard. Too hard. And you're not going to try hard enough. And yeah. I'm going to slide right in. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Is, that, is that how it goes? And Doug would be close to me, but he takes all the advice from you. So there's uh, there, that's his only, <laughs> that's 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 his only fault. He's like still taking advice from Sal. Well, your weight hasn't changed, right? Nope. So I, you're, you're doing that. I'm not progressing uh, program. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I'm, I'm just I'm, gonna maintain. I'm following uh, yeah. maps. No results. Yeah. That's, what I, <laughs> that's what I'm doing. Yeah. Maps maintenance. Yeah, yeah. I've, I've dropped four, but that's that's water and all that stuff. I was at 200 when I started. I've been tempted up. a couple times because of that, but I know again. I know it's just it's just the the mental game. Like I know that I don't need to to lean out right now. Mm -hmm. I have plenty of building that I can do and mm -hmm. still drop my body. Fat I'll tell percentage. you what's discouraging. So we were just filming uh, uh, some photos and stuff for some, some future project, <laughs> projects. Say, yeah, you can't and share that. I'm can not going to share what we're doing, but we we had no. a yeah, young. Everybody will know eventually, but we had a young lady here who's a a strength athlete. That's as far as I'll, I'll tell you. This girl can deadlift 425 pounds. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, it's yeah. more than just yeah. de deflated yeah. me. Yeah. She, yeah. She's not a big girl either. Yeah. Yeah. She's like a petite girl. She's pulling 425 pounds. So what granted, I'm, I've lost weight. Yeah. So, so yeah. me and Justin are gonna do. We're doing yeah. yoga now. Yeah, we're I'm going at a disadvantage. Hardcore yoga. We're yeah. done with the weights. Yeah, yeah we're going hot yoga now. I don't want to do weights anymore. Yeah, you know I mean? I'm done. I, I hang out my cleats. Yeah. We were uh, Doug was pulling that when we were down in uh, uh, Santa Barbara, right? Were you were you deadlifting over there? I was, but it wasn't 425. Yeah. I hate to say it. Yeah. Those, there was that a, was the worst gold gym of my life. It was terrible. Yeah. You know what it was? I figured Come it out. Come on, Santa Barbara. Is I, that the best you I, got? No, I figured I it out, I don't think dude. so. So did you guys notice that we were like right next to or underneath a hotel? Mm. I think that used to be a hotel gym that then Gold's bought. It's too small to be. A, it was like the size of. It felt like a hotel sized gym. Yeah. yeah. No, it was the smallest Gold's I've ever been in. Dude. Except they had a Group X room though. Like why? Oh, and what about the dudes that were deadlifting in front of you? That was a good time. <laughs> Their backs probably feel great the next day. Oh, so bad. Yeah. It was so bad. I have, I have awesome a, technique. I have a really hard time when training like that because the trainer in you wants to say something, you know? It bothers me. Yeah. It does bother. It, but it bo you also know it's not going to get. Right. And then I also know that it'll lead to ruining my workout because then I turn into like coaching right. and helping and yeah. it's like, ah. So you try and, yeah, just face other direction. Yeah. This is why I like to go to yeah. in my own my own place. You know, we got to take Enzo. You know, Enzo hasn't gone to like any of the big gyms. He hasn't gone to a real gym. He, ever. Thought, he thought that gym was a He's nice like, gym. This is awesome. He's like, this no, is the it's best. Not. Gym I've ever been in. We're like what? No, yeah, it's yeah. not. Not even close. <laughs> we got to take him to the one. Uh, take him to Brunel, dude. Yeah. Take oh him yeah. Down there. That. And then when we go to Austin, that uh, big Tex gym. That's oh. a, that's a real. That, that's that's that's, that's a, fucking, a big boy gym. Yeah, right that's a real gym. That's rust and and, and chalk and. It's yeah. like a lift. Yeah. It's a lifters gym. You'll grow a third yeah. testicle uh, going. Gold, gold. You I can, like lifter gyms. Yeah, it's a lifters gym. Like yeah, it's not like the. I think Enzo will appreciate golds and that type of feel because it's got a bunch of cool stuff. It's got yeah. a bunch of equipment Take and it's him got to plenty of mirrors. Yeah. Take yeah. him to what's his name? <laughs> <laughs> what's yeah. his name? Yeah. I know what he likes. In uh, uh, Florida. I can't. Pukulski. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. That's Pukulski. a bodybuilder gym. Yeah. That's a very good. Well, he's got That's the strength nice stuff in there too, though. That's what I like a combination of the both. Yeah. Both, you know, it depends now, on how I'm feeling. No, the big text one for me is that's that's my favorite. Yeah, yeah. I, I oh, want to go. The, you know what was the most fun yesterday about the traveling was on the way home all the music we were we were listening to, dude. That all was the throwbacks, the, the most like widest variety of music I think I've listened to, and I can't tell you how long. Adam had us listening to some like country, not just country. It was like like pop, like almost rapping country. What the fuck was that? Yeah, it, who was it? it? It's like uh, who I is it? I don't know what they. Oh, it was Sam Hunt. Okay. Uh, you know, I don't know what they, what genre they call that. It's, it is country, but it's like the newer country that's coming out. And I don't like a lot of it. I like his stuff though. I've seen him live before. It wasn't bad. It was good. I'm not going to lie. Yeah. Yeah. Don't hate. It was good. Yeah. I, I get Dude, I can go all over the place. You know that. Like I can listen. No, to, you don't like my music. Well, you talk shit about my no, <laughs> I do like your music, but I, I, you know, I want to be on like LSD at a fucking, at a, like a rave. You know what I'm saying? That, like, Whoa, that's when I want, that's when I want to listen to that music. Like if that we're, yeah, I mean, just yeah. to be honest. Yeah. No, there's, yeah. there's, there, I feel like there's times for like different, and that's where I think you're all backwards. Like we get in the car, everyone's chill. No, you know? it feels like a video we're game. We're cruising. When you for, play that music and you're cruising driving? for five and a half hours. Like there's, there's like, <laughs> there's music for that. Right. I mean, I want to like punch my head. I hope the forum gets 
my back on this one. Like this, there's music for like cert, whatever it is yeah. that you're doing. I didn't and have any glow sticks. Sal so has go to music that he always plays, and it's always. <laughs> yeah. It's not like that. Yeah. No, it's not. <laughs> like whoa, dude, we're just we're cruising, no, dude. It's not we're, like that. That was the craziest beat I've ever heard. Dude. <laughs> no, <laughs> no, <laughs> it's like that. You can't see, yeah. and you can't make beats. <laughs> You can't do it. Awful. Bro. Oh, it was great. But I, I, no, I like that. I mean, I remember uh, Baker was the one who got me on house, uh, house music and dubstep and all that stuff. And it I wasn't that hard, bro. Dude, I, my, yeah, my stuff. I had vocals. I wasn't. I wasn't. Pure. Kind of, dude. Kind of. <laughs> just, it does it good. It, <laughs> it makes you. You know, it reminds me of closeout. I mean, I love that stuff. On if it was gym end of the month, we're closing out. We're selling. I'm coming in the gym at six a.m. We're working till midnight. Like. Yeah. Taking four speed stacks, like I want to hear that music, yeah. dude. Right. You know, I want. Yeah, I want to hear on a Fedra. It's great. Yes. Yeah. I like. <laughs> I like exposing Enzo to the the rock music of our era because he didn't hear. He hadn't heard any of it. I could tell he doesn't like it at all. No. Like, I, I wanted to just pound it in his head. Yeah. I'm like, listen to this. This is what you should work out to. Yeah. He's like, why yeah, are they so is, angry? Yeah. Why is everybody so mad? I'm like, that's the point. Yeah. You're supposed to be angry when you work yeah, out. Yeah, lifting heavy smiles? weights, like how do you get through that? I don't trust anybody that smiles when they lift weights. If you're smiling and you're lifting or weights- Or talk to you. You're crazy. Stop talking to me. You're yeah. lifting weights now. Yeah, exactly. You need to be angry when you work out. That's anyway, it. Anyway, yeah. so you guys know- Lost, who lot to learn. You guys know I've been t- texting a lot lately? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Who's your my, text friend? My, my eight-year-old daughter. Oh, really? Yeah. No way. So she has my old phone and it's hooked up to Wi-Fi. So she doesn't have cell service or anything. Yeah. But it's so funny, dude. I wake up in the morning and she'll send me like three or four gifts that she'll pick. And it's like yes. a unicorn or like poop <laughs> dancing or whatever. Perfect. She'll be like, yeah. And she'll be like, I love you. And then she'll do, she uses all the, the shortcut words and stuff. And she's eight years old. Wow. It's so crazy to see your kid It's, it's already happening. Do you have to get on like Urban Dictionary to yeah. decipher it or yeah. what? Well, you know what I like about it? So, yeah, what she so, so here's the thing. T-O-G-H-I. Here's the thing. One of the challenging things about, you know, when you're divorced and you have, you know, I have dual custody, right? One of the difficult things is when they're not with me, you know, I miss them. And then and then when they're with me, I, you know, I, I love being with them. And then sometimes like, oh, I need a break. Then they're gone. I miss them. So it's like it's this duality, but it's also... You know, kids are kids. I mean, sometimes they're going to be in good moods. Right. Sometimes they're going to be in bad moods. And my daughter is a little bit, she can definitely fluctuate uh, from one end to the other. And it's hard not to take it personal. So like I'll call her because she's with her mom and I'll call and I'll talk to my son and they'll be like, put your sister on the phone. And then I'll hear him be like, you know, Papa wants to talk to you. And she'll be like, no, I don't want it right now. I'm busy. No. And so like my feelings hurt. Like, oh, <laughs> fuck, right. That stabs me. So I said, put me on speakerphone to my son. So he puts me on speakerphone. So I'm like, let me talk to her. And she's like, no. And I'm like, that's fine. I don't want to talk to her. And I hang up, right? So I'm like, <laughs> oh, no. Yeah, I'll bit her. Yeah. You know what it is? Yeah. I'm like, and I'm, I'm stomping I'm like, off. Fine. I'm like playing that game yeah. with my eight year old. You know what I mean? Like, I don't want to talk to you. Hella passive aggressive. You want to talk to me? <laughs> so stupid, I'll show right? You. I, and it's something I, just, you know, I realized afterwards. Like, oh, I shouldn't have said that. Yes. But then, like, you know, like a couple hours later, she's sending me like pictures because I think she felt bad. She Probably. realized, yeah, yeah. So she's sending me like loving pictures and stuff. And That's now great. she does, but your son doesn't do this at all. Text me. Yeah. My son text me memes yeah oh okay yeah my, my son's uh text me draw you can draw you know on, on that little text feature and they send me the, the most the weirdest drawings do they really yeah it's probably poop or, or yeah yeah or blow or explosions or like somebody farting now have, <laughs> yeah. have they made the a little uh what are they not emoji what the, what's the little character that looks just like you have you seen people do that yet oh your uh, avatar yes yeah, no. they don't do that. No, no. Oh, no my no, sister no. and my mom do that. They're, yeah. they're like spot on too. Yeah. They're hilarious. Do they really? Yeah, they're hilarious. No, no, no. I've my son, t- my son sends me memes. Now, he, my boy just turned thirteen, so he's he's a few years away from like the real memes. You know uh, what I mean? Oh, uh, he's like, the, like the like the like the like the where he's. Gonna oh, I'm re- sure he's there. He just doesn't want to share that with you. <laughs> yeah, oh no, 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 no. Yeah. I'm sorry. Yeah, 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 no, yeah. no, no. I can't do that. He's thirteen years old. I'm gonna wait, but. <laughs> There's no, gonna be, I'm there's, sure he's getting it's them, bro. Fine. It's fine. Yeah, exactly. I get it, but it's my, I'm his you dad. You don't want to think about no, that. No, I'm his dad. It's fine. But at some point in the near future, next three to five years, he's going to learn the true depths of my humor, the true darkness of oh, man. Yeah, the things that we find. And, it's, and I'm sure he's the same way. So now, out of all You're your kids, small doses. out of everyone's kids, who do you guys think, and Doug included here, who do you think is most likely to start listening to the show first? To listening to our podcast? Oh, yes. No. 
Oh, that's my my boy. I would. Yeah, I, I'm probably. pretty sure he's 13. He's the too. oldest. You think he will? Yeah, if he hasn't already, I'm surprised uh, Doug's daughter hasn't yet. Yeah, I, I think Brianna would. Brianna follows all you guys on Instagram. I was gonna say, <laughs> I feel like she does. I feel like she's oh, in. I'm the, following her back. Yeah, because she sometimes when I see quick too. when I see her, she makes little comments about stuff, and I'm like, you must be listening or paying attention, like, which makes me really nervous. Yeah, she's oh, yeah. following you guys. <laughs> yeah. Honestly, well, oh my like, memes are terrible clean it sometimes. Up. Yeah. 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 Yikes. You're the you're probably the most inappropriate. Me? Yeah. yeah. Definitely. Probably. Definitely. Probably. I'm not that inappropriate, but no. I can definitely I be say that. inappropriate stuff. Yeah. All the time. I think you're the most I think you're the most PC. Nah. On Instagram, yeah. Yeah. I think, yeah, not in real life. Not in real life. <laughs> no. <laughs> no. Get to know me. That's weird, yeah, man. You're it's messed up. How old's your your daughter? Is she twelve? Thirteen? No, she's twelve. Twelve? Wow. Well, that's the age. Yeah. That's the age when they do that kind of stuff, you know? Kids are on it right away, and they learn how to use that that stuff so fast. My kids teach me. Mm. When well, we just, did our YouTube, remember when my kids came and they were here when we were doing YouTube? Yeah. And at the end of YouTube, I sign off, and I'll say, please subscribe to our channel. So, and my, my daughter, she's like, Papa, she's like, they're not going to know you're posting new videos just because they subscribe. They have to click on the little thing that, <laughs> that lets them get notified. <laughs> this is after a year of YouTube yeah. that we've been doing. Like, right. and I was oh, like, my God, that's brilliant. Mind was yeah. blown. I was yeah. like, oh, shit. <laughs> it's bad when a 12-year-old school oh, us. No, 8-year-old. Or 8-year-old yeah, school exactly. us on our business. <laughs> Gosh, man, it's absolutely terrible. Yeah. I, don't th- I, don't think they, I don't think they'll listen because they, when I was a kid, I didn't give a shit what my parents were doing. Mm. Like I wouldn't care what they're doing. Like I don't think they're cool. Like you know, when you're a kid, you don't think your parents are cool. Mm-hmm. Right. So I wouldn't think they're cool enough for me to want to sit down and listen to. Well, what- you guys already saw how interested my oldest was in like creating videos and trying to get on YouTube yeah, and all yeah, that. Yeah. So he, I guarantee, he's gonna get through all of our stuff is at he, some point. Is well, he YouTube still, for sure? Is yeah. he still doing that? Oh yeah, 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 yeah. Um, and he wants to have his own channel bad. And so I'm trying to get him to storyboard and like really think it out first before yes. we actually Dude, start do to you know do how that. Many, he's like, okay. So he's drawing it all up for me. And do you know how many out. free employees we're going to have? I know. Soon. I'm so excited. We have Justin's two that's kids. That's my favorite yeah, part about all you guys kids. having kids. <laughs> Doug's daughter. We're going to save like, so much money. That's like five employees. I'm not paying him anything. <laughs> he's got to earn his way. What, what do you are, mean you're not paying him anything? What are the laws on you that? You give them dinner every night. They have a That's place true. to live. That's yeah, what are the laws That's a lot on, of what are the laws on that direction, kids? It's, it's huh? sweat labor. Is, this, is that how that works? If I think if they're on farms, they can work at a like, real young age. I think mm. only there's the child labor. There's child, there's so child gotta, labor laws. So you're going to throw some, some plants in the front? <laughs> <laughs> there's child labor laws, if I'm not mistaken. I'm yeah, pretty but, sure we can. Is there? Yeah. But they're your kids. Is it? How's that work? Yeah. I don't know. How There's got to be a loophole. I call it that. chores. You yeah. know what I mean? Even if yeah. they're here, it's chores. Yeah. Did you finish your, your chores, Dad? I'm not yeah. done editing no, the video. No. <laughs> I want my allowance. Like, yeah. Shh. Let's not talk about that. Like, yeah. in public. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. 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 I'm not paying you next week. You didn't clean yeah. your room. <laughs> <laughs> what the fuck, Dad? Thank like, you so I'm much. entitled to benefits. Yeah. Now I know how you do the money thing with your kids, which I think is really cool. Now, do you do you do an allowance, Sal? No, I don't. I don't give my kids uh, money. Anything? No, you just fuck them. Just no. no, nothing. <laughs> no. Holy moly! No, Adam. I mean they get they get you know the lights turn on. You know when they want the lights, there's water. You know what I mean? They get a lot of things. They just don't give them money. They don't get an allowance. No, no. You know what's funny? When I was a kid, I remember when I'd ask for an allowance, my dad used to look at me and laugh, and that made me feel bad. Yeah. So I did Dude, it. Dude, you were right about the farm thing. Yeah, 12 on a farm. Even children under 12 can work. I, love it. I know a lot of random things, Adam. So maybe uh, wow. maybe get some corn. You look into put that. It in that, front, that, means. that little front pl- uh, plant box that we have. Yeah, we can do that. Gresham, that should, yeah, that I think family businesses may be exempt, too. I'm not sure. I'm looking for that. Yeah. Mm. Like, why a farm? Yeah, let's get let's That's get so the funny to me. Because farms... I get it. It makes sense, yeah, kind yeah, of, yeah, yeah. but why not any other business then? I don't know. Hmm. Speaking of farms, I need to address this. I pissed off a lot of people, apparently, with, with one of our episodes. You did. Because I talked about the, the subsidies to the farms, and I said, you know, farms don't look like what you think yeah, they look like. It's not like the mom and pop farms. There are it? some of these mom and pop ones, but the vast majority of our food is produced by these massive well, corporations. But the that's va- not the, the vast f- majority of the food's produced by the bigger corporate like farms but there's way more mom and pop farms than there are the big yeah big but farms. when you look at it is a general market share there it's a mm. very very small piece but that wasn't my point my point with that was you know when it comes to propping up markets because of distortions in the market it doesn't it doesn't matter it's just inefficient it doesn't matter who's there and yes there are always people that will pay the price for you know bad economics and so i'm definitely empathetic to that i don't even remember what you said but you definitely you did stir it up yeah that was it was that statement right there like i own we own a farm we only have a thousand five hundred acres and blah 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 i'm like okay well yeah i get it <laughs> so yeah 12 
we're good once they're 12. Yeah. Well, we're solid. Yeah. Man, my daughter can start now. I'll She's do it eight. early. Yeah. Yeah. It's I'm a f- a, internship. My youngest is five. You know, you I'm, can learn some stuff. I'm, ex- <laughs> I'm excited. Hey, what did you think about uh, Bishop Barron's vans, dude? Oh, I love that. Cool, that was my favorite part. How cool is that? I didn't even notice. You didn't notice yeah, he had vans on? No. That? Oh, so great. The slip on kind and everything. He looked like super like ready to skateboard. Dude, it, his, was, it was amazing. I liked meeting, uh, was it the C, his CEO yes. of his company, Father Steve's all jacked. Yeah. He's all buffed. Yeah. I was like, what? Yeah. What was he saying about how they were, when they did, the, they first started YouTube or they did something and they did some special and they wanted him to come on a skateboard yeah. and everything. Yeah. 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 Cause they wanted to, to make him more like accessible yeah. and like more relatable. So like, yeah, why don't you come in on a skateboard and be like, Hey, what's up dudes? You know, like, come on. But he's got two guys on his team that are really into working out and lifting yeah. weights. Now, didn't you send them, you get, they're going to be doing maps, right? Maps prime pro for uh, Joe and for, um, Father Steve, because they're both experienced. And then uh, there's another gentleman on their team. I forgot his name. Apologies. Um, but he's going to do Maps Anabolic, which is, I think is pretty cool. Boom. Yeah. He's the big jack guy you keep forgetting about. He's 6'5 yeah. and like 280. Is that the guy? Or is Joe the guy that's really jacked? Brandon. Brandon's the guy that I'm giving Maps Anabolic. I thought it was Joe that they said was the big, I don't, the big tall. I don't remember. You, 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 you've been talking to him more than any mm. of us, so you would know better than anybody. I think that's just cool. It's just yeah. cool. You know what I mean? It's very cool. Yeah. <laughs> Today's Quad is brought to you by Maps Anabolic. If you're looking to maximize your overall muscle and strength, Maps Anabolic is the perfect place to start. With a full 30-day money-back guarantee, there is absolutely zero risk. So what are you waiting for? Go to mindpumpmedia.com and get started today. It's the motherfucking Quad. The eagle has landed. Quad. Our first question is from Diego H. Berrigan. I'm 19 years old and I'm just coming off a cut. I went from 160 to 139 pounds. Right now I'm hovering around 141 to 143 pounds. I want to put on some quality muscle. How long and how aggressive should I bulk? You know, here's the thing with bulks that we've talked a lot on the show about being on a long cut, a long calorie cut, and what happens to the metabolism and how the body stops responding and how it's beneficial to interrupt a cut with with maintenance or above maintenance. And in fact, there's a study that was recently published that uh, made the rounds that compared actually groups of people where one group just stayed on a cut for 12 weeks and the other group actually in between the, you know, for that 12-week period actually had a period of maintenance or slight surplus. And the group that fluctuated their calories or, or allowed themselves to eat more in between this 12-week cut actually lost more body fat. Now, those of us in the fitness industry know this through anecdote. We've known this for a long time. I remember for myself, the first time I ever really tried to get shredded, which was, was as, as an adult, I remember going off on a weekend and just eating whatever I wanted to, coming back, eating clean again, and like one or two days later, got leaner or look leaner than I had before. And I remember thinking like, oh, this is really crazy. This happens with the bulk also. I think when a lot of people are trying to put on weight, they're so afraid of losing muscle and they have to continue to pound themselves with calories that they don't realize that uh, they're, they're, it actually lo- the anabolic effect from the extra calories starts to decline. One of the most effective things I've ever done or recommended to people who are trying to put on muscle and, and on an aggressive bulk is to throw in fasts, Mm -hmm. like one or two day, 24 hour fasts, go back to the bulk. You will lose a few pounds of of water or whatever, but about four, three, four days after that, you'll notice this kind of rebound effect. And, uh, you know, competitive athletes and bodybuilders have known this for a long time. One of the most anabolic feelings you'll ever have in your entire life is if you've ever gotten shredded and then, and then eaten afterwards or fed yourself more. You just put on Your muscle. Your body just assimilates everything so effectively. Dude, the point. workouts I had after the leanest I ever got was when I took photos for Maps Anabolic. And I got down to, I don't know where I got down. It's probably four or 5%. Got really, really shredded. After that, I started feeding myself more. And there was, it was like the rebound was, and I, I didn't go crazy. I didn't eat shitty food either. I ate relatively healthy still. But the muscle building effects from that were, I mean, it was, it was comparable to, Back when I would take the over-the-counter designer steroid, you know, days like my body just sucked it up, 
And that's when I started to realize, like, if I want to really put on muscle, I need to interrupt it with these periods of lower calories because your body adapts and it stops using it the way you want. Studies show, too, high protein all the time. You actually become less efficient with, the, with the, how you use protein. And basically what that means is not that you're wasting the protein necessarily, but more of it gets used for energy that gets used for building muscle, tissue building and repair. Well, I I like to give the analogy of it like being like a sponge, like and we're running water over a sponge. And if you're on a bulk, that's you just running water through the sponge. You keep doing that, like the sponge is going to soak up a bunch of it. Then eventually, a lot of it is just kind of spilling out and spilling through the sponge. Nothing better than to just wring that out completely and then run it under again. So think of the same way when you're going through a bulk, like you know, if I'm feeding for like over over consuming on calories for two, three weeks, and I start to notice like progress start to stall, like I'll throw a fast like Sal's t- talking about, or I'll run like three days in a row of just lower calories. So if my if my bulking, you know, calories is 4,000 calories, and I've been running 4,000 calories for like two or three weeks, then all of a sudden I'll, I'll turn around and do a 3,000 or a 2,500 calorie day, two, three days of that in a row, and then go back back up now again. would would the inverse of this would you guys do that as well as far as like being on an aggressive Ab- cut and absolutely, absolutely. 100 100 right? same yeah. same rules apply yeah, and, i think it's even more important on the on the cut oh yeah. oh man absolutely because with the cut your metabolism well look here's the deal it's more important with the cut because most people are trying to cut but let me tell you something when you're bulking and you have a fast metabolism you're pushing it pushing it that shit can get really annoying and very difficult and here's one of the biggest challenges when you're trying to put on muscle and size especially if you're you know, 19-year-old male who might have a fast metabolism, your appetite starts to get, you start to lose your appetite. Like, you just keep force-feeding yourself, and it's like, right. I don't want to eat anymore. You know, that's something yeah. you have to contend with. And if you do like a- Oh, like, it's work, man. You you do three, four days of low calories, watch your appetite come right back. Well, and here's the thing, at 19, though, one of the hardest things when you're 19 years old, I remember trying to be, trying to build muscle and add weight at 19, is you're so uh, stuck on the scale weight. And that it, when you're when you're trying to gain and gain and gain, I remember mm-hmm. getting up mm-hmm. getting up first thing in the morning and seeing where I was at, feeding all day long, weighing myself before I went to bed, and then having goals for myself. Oh, I want to be this heavy before bed. And when you start to realize how much your body holds on to water and lets go to wa- lets go of water every single day, and how much of that pairs with sodium and wa- and with carbohydrates, that you know, so for every three grams of carbohydrates that we take in, your body holds three ounces of water. So if you you know today had 30 more grams of carbohydrates, which is really not very much, you know, that's 60 something ounces that your body can hold on to water that day. That's a big difference. You put 60 ounces on a scale, that's a big difference on Mm -hmm. the scale. So the fluctuation up and down on the scale, you can't let it get into your head, which is what used to happen to me. I I didn't know all that as a kid. Yeah. You would push. So you you just, you went up as or didn't go down. Right. Yeah, so it's like the dirty bulk kind yeah, of mentality. I was like, so, because in your head, you think good. that scale drops all of a sudden, drops, you know, three pounds one day because I couldn't get enough calories. Oh God, I lost muscle. It's like, no, you didn't lose a bunch of muscle. You just don't have as much water that your body's mm-hmm. holding. So if you can break through that and just not let it mentally fuck you and go, hey, I'm going to relax, let myself have two or three days that are low calorie, like Sal was saying, it'll kick that appetite back yep. up and then you go right back so, into your so here's, surplus. Here's what I like to do with bulks when I'm training clients for a bulk. Here's what I like to do. When you're going into the bulk, believe it or not, I do the biggest calorie increase in the beginning. Okay, I know it sounds reverse, like people think you have to work your way up. I do the biggest calorie uh, boost in the beginning, then I slowly taper it down, and then I do a maintenance or slightly uh, a, a short period of cut, and then I do it again. Now, why do I do it that way? When you're coming off of a cut, and I'm not talking, when I say the most calorie boost, I don't mean like insane crap food, okay? So this is all in context. You're capturing that window. Yeah, I'm capturing that window of when it's going to get turned into muscle. Mm. Now, your body starts to adapt. After about a week or two, your, your metabolism starts to speed up, believe it or not, and or if you push it, you just start to put on body fat, which... You know, if you're bulking for a sport like football, sometimes that's okay. You want the extra weight. But most people don't want to put on, you know, body fat. They want lean body mass. So I'll start with the more aggressive uh, bulk, which 
anywhere between 300 to 700 calories on uh, sur- surplus, I would say. Sometimes 1,000, depending on the on the person I'm working with. I don't know. What about you, Adam? When you give someone a... a is it- no, I would... Well, people that I'm coaching is totally different because that would be based off of how long I've been coaching for them, how I've assessed their metabolism before. And so I would go as low as 250 or 500, but then I would go as high as 1,000 plus. So I, I would do that. I wouldn't push anywhere beyond about 1,000 to 1,500. Especially maybe, maybe and not longer than a week or two. Yeah. Right? So we'll we'll ref, we'll refeed like so when I was coaching Melissa for her her show, getting her ready, and I like using her because she's a small female, so you can get kind of an idea. You know, we'll run like three days in a row where so her her maintenance, like her her caloric maintenance, is like around two thousand calories, and when we're cutting for a show, we're playing with somewhere between sixteen hundred and eighteen hundred to kind of like consistently drop her. But then what I'll do is like as we get closer to showtime, is I'll tell her, okay, I want you know, three days in a row, I want you to run at like 1300 calories, which is really low. But then at the, after her three days in a row of 1300 calories, I'll push her all the way up to like 26, 2700 calories. Mm. So it, it depends on that, right? So it depends on how depleted I am on how much I'm going to feed. Like, so like you're saying, you're right. Like that's, I'm going to feed the hardest after low calorie, after a fast, after I've been cutting for a while, that's when you're going to feed the hardest is because the body, just like a sponge, again, when it's been ringed out completely, like it's going to be able to absorb the most amount of water right right after you've wrung it out, not after you've poured a little bit, some, mm-hmm. a little bit more, a little bit more. Like, so same concept, you're going to do the same thing is you're going to feed hard and that's going to be all relative to yeah. who you're talking and, to. And, and you're, you are after lean body mass. So I think it is important that you don't just pay attention to the scale. Look at your performance. Look at how your body feels. Uh, look at how it looks. You know, putting on, you know, 10 pounds in a month, most of it's probably not muscle. I mean, let's be honest, right? So if you're going, you know, people say, how aggressive should I, should I bulk? I don't know. I would say if you're you're staying relatively lean, I wouldn't go more than a few pounds a month, and that's still kind of aggressive for muscle gain. But because of his age, I'd say three four pounds a month for a few months. I've I've done it. I've done it where I've trained an 18, 19 year old and put ten to fifteen pounds of muscle on them in, in a three month period of al- almost all muscle. I've done it before, but we had to do it pretty smart. But definitely, if you're well, going, it matters too how lean he is. Like I mean, if you're a nineteen year old kid and you're eight percent body fat, you're so skinny, like you aggressively bulking is is not as damaging as the person who's already at 16, 17% and they're bulking. Mm-hmm. So, you know, when I'm, because we still, I'll still bulk a client or I hate saying bulk because people think bulk and they think <laughs> getting bigger. I'll feed a client higher than their maintenance calories, you know, even if they're overweight, you know, even if you're somebody who is, who comes to me and you're 30 pounds overweight, I'll still feed you in a surplus because we want to ramp the metabolism up. But my goal in that case is I don't want to see any real weight gain. I just want to keep trying to creep, creep your calories up without adding a ton of weight. Where a kid like this, well, I'm not as concerned if we put five or six pounds on. Mm-hmm. And you just, I mean, only you're going to know when you're when you're looking at yourself and paying attention to, you know, how how much of that you're putting on. That I'll weight. tell you what, though, you know, I, I can really relate. You know, 19 years old, skinny man. I I could yeah. eat. I, it was like I was a I was a garbage. Disposal. Those are about oh, my I numbers know. right there. At nineteen, really? Yeah, yeah. You like, weighed one hundred and sixty pounds. Yeah, one hundred and forty. I I graduated. I graduated high school at one forty five at six three. Oh yeah, you were. Yeah, you can see my ribs. You were pretty pretty thin there. Yeah. Bean yeah. pole. Yeah. yeah, I was real. Skinny. No, I so I was. I didn't. I was one uh, one ninety when I graduated. But I had been lifting weights at fourteen. I was one eighty five. I was pretty skin and bones. Really, too. really. One eighty five is pretty good size for a high school kid. Yeah, yeah. yeah five bad. six. Shut up. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I'm six foot, man. Next let, question. Let be known. With heels. <laughs> <laughs> Next question is from Grace Hills 14. How do you approach someone in the gym who has horrible form to the point where they may hurt themselves <laughs> We're talking about this right now. without yeah. becoming coming Speaking off as of an which. asshole? I don't work at the gym, but am a personal trainer elsewhere. Should I do something or just leave it alone? This is a tough one, man. It depends, man. I remember... I'll just tell you about some of the worst things I've seen in the gym. I saw a guy, there was a one guy that used to come in, used to grab the lat pull down bar. He'd load up the, the weight stack and then he'd use his knees to pry himself down because he was, you know, he couldn't get down because the bar was heavy, or the stack was heavier than him. So now he's being stretched by the bar with weight on it and then he would just twist back and forth. He would <laughs> wow. do like, I don't know what he was doing. And then he would let go of it. So it would, a little spinal action. Then he'd add weight 
to the to the weight stack. And I don't know why he added weight. I'm like, you're not using the resistance. It's just you know stretching you out. Uh, but I worked at the gym, and I would say something. If you don't work at a gym, I recommend you don't say anything. Well, I, think I don't think it's going to come across. I think well. it's actually really easy. If you're a personal trainer, you should know this, okay? If I see somebody who is, and, and typically it's like the an older lady who is mm-hmm. looking at the machine, and you could tell that she's lost at what she's right. like. If I see that, and she looks like she's lost, and then she's doing a movement that could potentially hurt her, absolutely I'll come over and I'll come say something to her. Yeah. And I think she'll appreciate that. But if it's somebody, if it's somebody who it looks like they think they know what they're doing and they're getting after it, uh. and they're not looking around or looking like they don't know what they're doing, it's none of my fucking business. I'm not gonna come. If it's not my gym, if I'm not working at that gym, because if I, if I'm working at that gym, that's a potential lead. Mm-hmm. Oh, it's, it's so a that's case a case no, of know your audience. Yeah, one hundred percent. Like if you have exactly if there's somebody like looking around and kind of like unsure about what they're doing, you know, be like, hey, what are you up to? Like you know, you kind of spark conversation initially with that. But if it's somebody that's like like. Like we saw in that gym, we're not going to go up to them and like give them proper cues. No, and they're technique and mid mid they could 20s give two shits about it. Athletes, you know, slapping each other on the ass, telling each other how great their form was. Like, yeah. I'm not going to go interrupt that. Like, you're some just going to get into a fight. Yeah, no, yeah, it's yeah, not. Yeah. It's not. It's not my place yeah. to go do that. Have you guys seen some pretty gnarly injuries in the gyms that you've you've run? Um, you know, be honest. I haven't on the seen, treadmill for the most part. Yeah, I've <laughs> seen get flying yeah, off the treadmill. I've seen crashes. I've seen people, you know, drop weights on themselves. I've seen things like that, but I haven't seen somebody like really, really fucked himself. Oh, up I saw that a guy bad. snap his forearm in half. Whoa, oh yeah. whoa, dude. Yeah, at Hillsdale. Wow, Hillsdale. He was. How do you snap your forearm? And well, what are you doing? Well, oh. him and his buddy were benching. Hammer girls with one forty. No, him and his buddy were benching or incline benching. And his buddy unracked one side of the bar, oh. so the other side, you know, with the weight, it, flipped the oh bar. He was standing next to it, so the bar flipped over and just hit him in the arm. Oh. So it's like a, oh, a forty-five like a, pound bar. That's like a just total by accident, yeah. right? I and mean, it, a and freak it's, accident. Well, right there. dude, bone sticking out, bu- blood. Ooh, that yeah. bad? Oh yeah, it was a bad Ooh. one, dude. Everybody freaked out. That was one of the worst ones. Yeah, I saw a guy tear his quad. One. That you know, was kind of weird. That's a really good. So that's a really good point that you're bringing up though, right now, because I mean, we've all been doing this for you know 16, 20 years, and. I can count on one hand how many times I've seen like a major injury, and I don't think I can even think of one like that. Yeah. Like that's happened. So most people are probably not going to hurt themselves that 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 bad in the gym. Now you might get some muscle strains. I've definitely yeah. seen people like deadlift and then like, oh, you see him walk away. <laughs> and like, oh, you know, but I've, fuck, I've done that. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like I just did that the other day, like an asshole. You know what yeah. I'm saying? I was with the young kids and trying to show off and and I I you know felt a pop and I was like ah shit so yeah. I'm, I'm like I'm not immune to it yeah no uh, I, I don't think you should go up to somebody and, and say something to them uh, especially if you don't work at the gym if you really are concerned and you really think someone should say something then go tell the staff to say it because you will not be received uh, very well typically yeah. usually you're not going to be received very well no. yeah it's not you your know? it's not your job I, even I, that to go tell it's like yeah it's not your job it's not your place yeah but if you're look if you're a trainer and you're like oh this person's going to for sure yeah. hurt themselves I had a, I almost had a situation. Are they like though? That. How many times have you seen that happen? You just we just went we just all of us just racked. I cannot think of I a time yeah. where someone has really really hurt themselves. Dude, I saw it. Golds, the one you work at. I saw one of the trainers there doing circuits with an old lady, and she was doing box jumps. Oh, if there it's was a no. Tra- if it's a trainer doing that, I'm gonna say something to the trainer. What do you say? Oh, uh, just like no, oh, you're not. You no, liar. I'm not. You're a fucking liar. <laughs> <laughs> I, was, I feel like compelled to though. Know, I'm like you're such a liar. What no, the hell you're not. You're right. I don't give a shit. I don't. I don't. Just I know, that's right on them. That's on them. <laughs> it was either a Jedi mind trick. I feel like, I feel like all the of a sudden you're looking for. All of a sudden I like I want to do something, but no, I, I still wouldn't. Have you ever had somebody try to correct your form? Or <laughs> yeah, of course. Yes, that's dude. That's the funniest. Uh, that happened at like Orange yeah. Theory one time. I was doing. Like, yeah. Oh yeah. Rows, and, uh, with the TRX and like fucking like like. Telling me I need to flare my elbows. See out. Now, also, now this is the most common thing that I see, and this what is what are you what, doing? a trainer who's asking this question. So the most common thing I see is an an overly ambitious new trainer. Yeah, an overly ambitious new trainer who just learned something right, and they want to go out and teach him. Which I don't want to shit on that, but at the same time, too, you need to have some social awareness. Yeah. If if the person who you want to go give advice to because you think their form is bad is not looking around like they're lost, leave them the fuck alone. But you can see there is a very clear distinction when you see that 
person who's like reading the machine yeah. and like you know looking at their hands while they're doing the exercise <laughs> yeah. they look lost and you walk up to that trainer you touch them on the shoulder and you say hey sir or ma'am would you like me to help you with that or show you how to use that they'll light up and they'll be so excited that you came over they used to train us to say i don't know if they taught you guys this but this, this is a long time ago they used to train us to say when you go up to someone and you want to you know talk to them about personal training you notice that their form is off what you're supposed to say is excuse me sir can i show you another way to do that did they teach you guys that? Yeah, yeah. So you're supposed so you to don't, so you don't yeah. insult yeah. them. So can I show you another way to do that? In other words, the way you're doing it, which <laughs> yeah. is bet wrong, and yeah. the way I do it, which it's is not right. condescending at all. Yeah, let me show I you. I used to way. ask. I used to ask what they're working out that day. Like I would walk. I just start conversation. So if, yeah. if I was a trainer, That's the now, best way to do now it. if I'm a trainer and I see shitty form. And That's even an opportunity. Yeah, it's a lead, right? So now, yeah. and, but even still, I'm not walking up. So let's let's take the, like, what the guys. What program are you doing? The guys or... we saw ye yesterday, right? Okay, those guys, I would approach if it was my gym and I was a trainer there. But I would, I'd be very careful on how I do it. I'd walk up and I'd befriend them first. Right. Hey, what are you guys lifting today? Oh, back. Oh, shoot. How long have you guys been deadlifting for? Man, that's... Yeah. And I would create a conversation around it. I wouldn't come in and insult them and go like, hey, you know your form sucks. Yeah. You want me to show you how to do it right? You know, like mm -hmm. that, that I would not do because I'm not going to convert that into a client. Right. So I would come in asking We have weight questions. belts over here. You might want to... You know. <laughs> yeah. No, I'd come in asking Protect questions. Protect yourself. And if you're not, if it's not your gym, you're not getting leads from it, you know, pay attention to your own workout. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Next up is John Wilmoth. Many NFL offensive linemen have lost 50 plus pounds within a few months of retiring. What are the long term effects of force feeding your body to stay above 300 pounds? Is their metabolism permanently broken? The last thing that the that NFL offensive linemen need to think about in regards to their health is force feeding their body food. Dude. That's honest. That's the honest to God truth. I, I mean, what do you mean? What do you mean by that? Well. What's the biggest risk that they that they are encountering? Oh, playing, oh I get you. Concussions football. and things like that. Okay. Oh my God! So so yeah, it's like, almost like insurance. Like well, if you're a, if you're a lineman, if you don't feed yourself to be that big, something much worse is going to happen to you than what that food. Doug, is while we're do. talking, well, could you could you do me a I favor got, and pull up the the life expectancy? Yeah, I have the that. average. Oh, is that what you're pulling? It's like fifty four. Yeah. Yes, it? it's low as fuck. Yeah. So I was looking this. So let's see. Um, let let the Google. Let, yeah, go ahead. Let the Googler do it. Okay. The I'm still looking. Yeah. The Googler. I know I looked this up the other day, though, and there was 500 players listed right now that are over 300 pounds. So it's like the, the game has escalated to uh, 53 to 50. Everybody's competitive as far as like, you know, how much weight they can put on because they're going against such monsters. Yeah. So it, it really is like something to be concerned about because, two, the life expectancy for somebody that heavy is is pretty shitty. Did you find it, Doug? Yeah. yeah 53, 53 to 59. Yeah. So that is that's, crazy. That's super young, but yeah, that's not. But, but this the, is for the oh, this is for the big boys, though. This no, is not. And and Justin brings up a good point because we and we talk about because everyone does talk about what Sal's talking about the concussions and that's the big fear, or just the beat down but, your body. But you know, I could probably put an argument together that the fifty three to fifty nine is probably more internal shit that's wrong with them because of potentially things like overeating and steroid use and lots of things like that for a long period of time. That may have done more internal damage to them than even like... It's, the it's not even that long because if you look at the average uh, length of time that someone plays in the NFL, because that's an average, right? So that's an average of everybody that retires. Mm -hmm. If you look at the average length of time someone plays in the NFL, it's not that long. It's not a long career. Well, no. Now you're talking about every, but those those same people are probably the people that drive that number up even higher because they live longer. Because they, yeah. they only played in the NFL for three years, right? So the well, ones that says, play longer, it's probably lower than than. than well, it says generally years. like uh, three three and a half years. Offensive and defensive linemen had a 52 percent greater risk of dying from heart disease than the general there you go. population. Oh, yeah, yeah. There you go. Uh -huh. So oh. yeah, there, there's that's a that's a val I think that is a, a valid concern. But you know what? Here's here's the, it reminds me of the question where we we we've addressed before about uh, the. Uh, Olympian, right? Like if he, if you were to, you at we asked, uh, or they they asked if you. This were, was a study. Yeah, this right. Was an actual study. Yes, if you mm -hmm. asked them if they could win a gold medal and then they would die within In five years, within five years, like uh, the majority, majority would choose death. Yes, it's crazy. So uh, most of these guys that are that are working their asses off to get to the NFL, yeah, they don't life, care. They don't care. No, no. It's I, I'll do anything, anything to get there. And if you were to ask them, like, hey, you're going to die in X amount of years because you did all this stuff, I'm it's sure funny because the majority of them would say it, it is what it is. It's funny because when you're competing in such a highly competitive market, okay, so uh, you can even look at tech. Like, I want to be the number one like tech mogul or whatever. 
or football or whatever, when you're competing in a high market, it a, high, a highly competitive market, I should say, the top people, it's gonna, it's definitely gonna skew towards people who are willing to do whatever it takes. Yep. That's just the way it is, right? right. If you want to be the best at anything at that level, you probably have an attitude that says, yeah. "I really don't give a fuck. I'll sacrifice I'll my body this later. I'll sacrifice my brain. I'll sacrifice my my, my family, relationships, family, relationships, all that whatever." Stuff. Yeah. You know, it's funny. It's like when they bring up CEO, you know, uh, salaries. They're like, "Yeah, does the CEO deserve to make you know a million dollars?" And it's like he works 120 yeah. hours a week, right. right? You know, and he doesn't live at home mm-hmm. half the time, and. You know, it's you're, you're, no. I think it's a great analogy. I think yeah, it's a, anywhere, right? Anywhere. You you just you kind of don't care. And the, now here's the thing: now, if I'm playing in the NFL, and I'm a lineman, and I'm thinking to myself, okay, do I want to be 300 pounds and eat too much food, which may be bad for my heart, or do I want to be 220 pounds and get murdered? Right. Right. <laughs> at the line. Over. Yeah. Yeah. Be, okay. Which one's more dangerous? Right. To be quite honest with you. You know, being big is probably more of a safety yeah. at that particular and, point. Well, yeah, and it's more, like, desirable for coaches to recruit. You know, you want to yeah. have a big-ass lineman because, you know, that's that's way to drive the ball forward, and you're going against other big behemoths. Yeah. You need somebody else to yeah. counter that. So well, it's, I, I think, too, it's the, the, game. the end of this, too, is their metabolism permanent. I don't think their metabolism is permanently broken. Mm. Um I think I don't think I, I, you know I what I think of is it is more affected than anything is the mental space because like I've trained and I know you guys yeah. will echo this I've trained a lot of ex like D one you know high level uh, athletes college athletes right so like swimmers or volleyball players or basketball or even football where they were at a very very high level in college. And then, you know, now they're hiring me and it's 10, 15 years after college, right? So now they're like 40 years old. They want to hire me to, to train them. One of the most difficult people to train are oh, these people. Yes. For sure. Be- An ex-athlete is the hardest client. Dude. Yes. I hated yes. training ex-athletes yeah. because they still... They, they go way too hard. Yes. Their mentality is all... It's stuck there. Not only is their mentality on working out stuck there. Where so is nutrition. Everything. Nutrition. Everything. Like I remember I trained this, this female client who wanted to lose 30 pounds and she was a very... Comp- she was an Olympic altern- alternate for swimming. So she was like a badass in college, right? But this was... I don't know, 12 or 13 years after college, she had a baby, she gained 30 pounds. She wasn't, I mean, when she was training at her highest level, she was in the pool for six to seven hours every single day, right? So she would tell me, like, I eat healthy and I don't know why I can't lose weight. My metabolism must be just destroyed from pregnancy. So I started having her track and she was blown away at how many calories she was eating because her concept of appropriate levels of food was based it was on skewed. it was based on when she was doing all that you know six seven hours of swimming and shit. Right. So I show her like, oh that chicken breast right there that you're eating is a hundred grams of protein. <laughs> that's not the, the serving for you. You know, she's like, what do you mean? I used to eat this kind of stuff all the time. Right, you know, right. like, no, 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 it doesn't work. So that's the most difficult. And thing. even how they train, they train so explosive. Like you're fifty now. Come on, <laughs> you're fifty, bro. We're not going to bench like that anymore. You got to stop doing that. But they, you, when you train someone for, or when someone trains for twenty years of their life a certain way, it's really hard to be that that young trainer who gets you, and then all oh, of a sudden is going to change and break those habits. Yeah. Especially what, what, and that's the other part, the other mental piece is when they identify with the best shape or the best they ever felt right. was when they were doing X, Y, and Z. Yeah, so I'm going to do that again. Right, X, yeah. Y, and Z. I was eating like this. I was training like this. And so I know it works. And then try being that other trainer. like, oh, we're going to slow down on this. We're not going to eat like that. Like They're like, come on, get yeah, out of yeah. here with that. The other problem, too, is the, the, the skewed, um, skewed understanding of intensity or at least pain. So like, if I'll get somebody who was an athlete 10 years ago, but hasn't worked out since, they don't understand that their body, they haven't worked out for 10 years. And so they think, oh, I'm going to work out now. Right. And I know what pain feels like and I'm okay with like, it. This is just soreness. Yeah. And Even I'll be like, it's, yeah, it's probably like no, 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 no. Like you, we have to start way, 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 way lower than that. And I'm like, but I can do like 50 more sets. Like this doesn't even hurt. Like, okay, that's a point. Well, then you add in too all the imbalances. 
So most athletes are, I mean, most sports are play, you know, you're either right footed or you're the right arm. All the patterns they yes, built up. you've with, created yeah. this in, these crazy imbalances on your body and you've been able to cheat through it your entire life. And so you don't realize how much dysfunction it's caused in the rest of your body and trying to reverse that dysfunction. Oh my God. Nightmare, dude. Yeah. 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 No, I would say for these guys afterwards, they, the smart ones probably have like a post, you know, career training regime a post career oh it's crucial nutrition yeah it's it's absolutely crucial because otherwise um they could set themselves up you know pretty poorly so yeah next question is from dining with dio have you ever negotiated for a raise mm. how did you go about it yeah i'm interested in hearing you know i i didn't work for any for i i've been an entrepreneur f- since i was 22 Right, so I've been doing it for a long time, but I I know both you guys worked longer for twenty four than I did, mm-hmm. and I know in particular you, Adam, you had to negotiate several times, right? Uh, on behalf of my staff, not so much myself. Well, mm. here's the thing: I, I didn't have to negotiate that hard because I let my work do the negotiating. I just yeah. had this conversation with Enzo because Enzo stayed with me while we were in Santa Barbara, and he's a young seventeen year old kid, and I, I was explaining to him that. You know some some of the generation, and I know I'm, this is an overgeneralization to say the generation now, right? Because there there was slackers when I was a kid too, you know. But it seems like this this we're in this generation now of the instant gratification, and they expect to get certain things. Where I just wasn't raised that way because yeah. I didn't have much, and so yeah, I, don't, I don't. I don't have that mentality. I had to work and fight for everything. And I remember when I worked as a kid in high school at the dairy, right? So I worked at the at the ranch. And there was four other uh you know cow milkers and ranch hens like so we and we did everything what's the technical term though bovine mammary extraction <laughs> yeah please that's what i told the chief much- yeah. <laughs> bovine yeah. mammary extraction technician yeah made a whole four dollars you were you a lab coat yeah, yeah, yeah. for sure yeah. <laughs> could take you to carl's jr afterwards <laughs> uh yeah so when when i was doing that there was four of us and we did everything right it wasn't just just the milking the cows there's a lot of other things on the job that we had to do um i took pride in being the best at it. Now I had no, I didn't love the job. I found a way to love the job. Like I didn't like, Oh, I want to milk cows when I get older. I didn't think about that. It was the one of the only, it was either that or work at a restaurant. Right. But when I was working there, I wanted to be the best at what I did. So, and the best when you're working for someone is the most efficient, Mm -hmm. which doesn't really benefit me. means I make less money. means if I get the job done Mm -hmm. faster than the other guy, I get paid less. But I didn't, where I feel like some kids think about that and they're like, well, that's stupid. Who would do that? I want to make more money. And the whole idea is to make more money. But I thought of it like, okay, well, if I'm the best at everybody, I'm irreplaceable. Mm -hmm. And that to me was more valuable than trying to make 50 more cents. And inevitably, it always ended up getting you a raise in the in the long term. Yeah, and I, to echo that, and I definitely share those same sentiments. But like at, at the same time, like you start to evaluate whether or not you're being valued. Mm-hmm. So this is something that I would use as sort of you know this is the last the last sort of straw for me. You're not recognizing my talent. You're not recognizing my value for this company. I'm the fuck out of here. And you know you can you can give me an offer as I walk out the door. Usually I made up my mind at that point, mm. but uh, there's been a couple points where, or a couple times where companies have actually brought me back and given me a raise. But I mean, that's that's kind of an extreme example, but I had the same mentality. I'm not trying to get in there and like, like make a case for myself. If you don't recognize it, um, you know, that's to your loss. To, me that, so, to me, that it would motivate me, right? So it, this has happened to me where the, with pay, and then it's also happened like, here's a, a non like work pay analogy that's similar is I remember when I got into competing and everybody told me about all the politics and if I didn't have a coach and I didn't have a team, there'd be no way that I could win. And and I remember getting into it and seeing a lot of those things, but all that did was drive me because I thought, okay, yeah, that makes it more challenging because of that for sure because there's politics involved. But if I'm so good, if I'm so much better than everybody else, they just can't deny it. And I feel the same way about work. Like, you know, you know, there's absolutely some jobs are not going to value you. Some jobs, the CEO's busy and he doesn't have time to think about what you're doing. But that would just drive me to be that much better. Like, I'm going to be so fucking good. You can't ignore who I am. And so when but, I... But you also combine that with a high degree of assertiveness. And, and this is the thing, because so, what you're communicating makes a lot of sense. But a lot of people get stuck thinking that I'm just going to be so... I'm going to just be good 
and they're going to pay me more. And That's because they're insecure about how they... F- well, well, here's the reality, because they've done... I've actually done a lot of research on this actual specific subject, and what they... Very strongly connected. Your pay is very strongly connected to two traits. Besides, there's a lot of traits, right? Conscientiousness, and there's a few others, but there's also agreeableness and assertiveness. The more agreeable you are, the less likely you are to get a raise. The more assertive you are, the more likely you are to get a raise. In fact, they have to control for that when they're comparing uh, position to position or when they're comparing men to women and they're saying, why do, why do men make more than women in this same exact position? They control all the factors. And one of them is that men tend to rank much higher in assertiveness and women tend to, tend to generally, because when you go on the individual, when you look at one person, of course, they can be either or, but women tend to uh, be more towards agreeableness. And there's people, there's actual coaches that coach people on how to get raises. And one of the things that they coach them is on how to be more assertive. And here's another thing. Mm. Here's a, this is a big strategy, is people who are willing to leave and find other jobs get raises. People who stick and don't go anywhere yep. tend to not. So one of the most effective things you can do is before you ask for a raise... Go find another competitive yeah. comparative job. Get a job offer. Go look around, man. Bring that to your manager and say it just like this. <clears throat> look, I love working here. I, I really appreciate everything this company's done for me. I like working for you. This just this is just something that happened. I don't want to leave, but they're paying me more. Mm-hmm. Please give me a reason not to leave. Yeah, you and first, they will give you, you that raise. You first have to. This I have this conversation with Katrina a lot right now. Because she's established herself in, in her company as like one of the most dominant people in the in part of the executive mm-hmm. team or the management team, right? And I keep telling her like you and she she does get raises on a very consistent basis, but I'm like, your value is so much higher than where it's. And they keep telling you that you're constantly mm-hmm. telling her that you now have that leverage. But I think you first have to establish that like assertiveness is important. Yeah, don't ask for a raise if you suck. Right, that, that, <laughs> yeah, of course. Well, that, but let's <laughs> a be lot honest. Of people do but, though. Yes, yeah, that, I mean yeah, sometimes I, questions like this come from yeah, that you, person. You wonder exactly. Yeah, come from people. Yeah, that, good point. Good that point. want and so. I was heading in the direction where you're at because yeah. you absolutely got to have the balls to be able to say, right. I'm out of here. Yep. Because, but the only way you get that is if you've if you've created enough value and you, you believe you're that You have that to negotiate value. from a strong position. Yeah. And you, a strong position is I'm you're, you've provided lots of value to the company. You're mm-hmm. fucking kicking ass and you know it and everybody else knows it. And here's the, the ace in your sleeve. Get another job offer. I can't tell you how powerful that is. You get a job offer for someone who's going to offering to pay you ten thousand dollars more a year, and you put that in front of your manager after you say, "I love working here. Oh. I don't want to leave." However, I have hey, this here. And, that and could the, be a great determiner too. If you're not if you're not finding any jobs, you right? ain't that good, bro. You ain't That's good. Right. That's you ain't right. that you fucking better good. Step your shit. It's up. like it's just like it's. That's a great point. It's just like a player in a sports team. You know what I'm saying? And that this happens all the time with them. They think they're so good. They're so, they're a big part of why the team's having a lot of success. Well, then why does nobody else want mm-hmm. you? Mm-hmm. Right. If nobody else wants to pay that money for you either, you're not, you're not that, worth that much. Yeah, you're not that good. That's actually there, a very answer. That's actually a very strong market signal because yeah. the market will determine. And I love saying this pisses people off. The market determines your value. Now, I don't mean you're not a valuable human. I don't mean you're you're less of a person or you need to be treated poorly or anything. And that's not what I mean. What I mean is in the market, in society, the market determines your value. So, yes, I don't care how hard you work at you know flipping burgers or digging ditches or doing other jobs that are very physically demanding. If the pay is low, that's because there's a lot of people willing to do that job. If you're paying, getting paid a lot, it means that there's a small pool and you're one of the few people that can do that job, however easy or hard you perceive it to do. So if you think you need a raise and you're going out and looking for a comparative job that's going to pay you more and you're finding that no one's offering you any more money or they're offering you less money, that is a market signal. That's telling you like, oh, I was off. I thought I was worth more, but the reality is my value to the market is actually what they're paying me. And that's the kicker when you when you alluded over to me and, and having to deal with this and my assertiveness, it's like, well I, I, I don't you I've, don't you don't come across as someone's not gonna say something either. Yeah, yeah. Well I've also always wor- I've always had other options. I've always had it just like Katrina has right now. Like mm-hmm. she's working all these jobs and with other these huge contractors and big deals and they're always like, Hey, do you want to would you ever come here and how much do you make? And they're always offering I'm like, that's your sign that it's time for you to, to level up on your company that you're in right now. It's like time for you to let them know, like, hey, everyone else is offering me all this money to come work. I love working here. Yeah. This is what I want to make. And that's kind of how the conversation goes down, exactly that. Like, I love working here. 
I'm getting offered from other places to go work there uh, for more money. I want to stay here. Yeah. I want to continue to perform, you guys, but I need to make this much money. I never understood. Bottom line. I never understood people would go in. And, I never understand it when people try to negotiate from a position of weakness. And what I mean by that is if you go ask your boss. Yeah, can I have a raise? You go ask your boss for a raise and you have nothing, you have nothing in your corner. And he calls your bluff or she calls your bluff and says <laughs> yeah. no. And now you got to leave with your tail between your legs. Like That's awkward. Have something. In, have something. Like, so you could sit down. You could show them. I, that is such a powerful position. Yeah. If I had an employee that I valued and I was paying them 20 bucks an hour and I really liked them and they came to me and said to me, Sal, I really liked it. This person, though, is going to pay me. Here's the offer. It's 30 bucks an hour. But I really, I'm gonna be like, you know, I'm gonna figure out a way. Like, it's much more powerful than someone coming up to me and be like, I deserve more. This right. reminds me of uh, the show Billions. Remember oh, when, yeah. when they were all asking for their their raise and to pitch to him? Uh, I love you know, that. their reasoning. Love you that. should watch that episode specifically. I don't know which one it was, but it's a great episode. Here's something that my my ex wife used to do that used to just oh, used to make me so angry. Right, so she would get a review every year. She worked at this company forever, and I kept telling her like, you should change jobs you don't like it there and you'll make more and she never listened to me but every year they would go to do this like evaluation to give you a raise right and so they would ask you and people do this and it's so stupid to me they'll ask you well how much would you like to get paid and people will actually give them a range like oh i'd like a five to seven dollar raise <laughs> what do you think they're gonna pick yeah if they pick anything <laughs> They're going to pick $5. Yeah. Don't give them a range. Yeah. Tell them what you want. You know what I'm saying? They say what you want. Yeah. I want $7. That's what I want. You know, and then start right there. I don't know. I, people do that all the time. It makes me laugh. Oh. You know? A good a good read for uh, this conversation. Uh, one is Crucial Conversations. That's a good book. And then uh, Jack Welch's Winning. Both those are excellent reads And as far as you know, having these tough types of conversations. Because they can be tough, right? It can be challenging for someone. Yeah. To, to especially go especially if you like your boss, right, right, you know, especially if you like your boss. But that's why I think you go to them and you're just. But that, if you're smart though, if you really like your boss and you have a relationship, that gives you more leverage. You know what I'm just saying? be honest, right, yeah. right, absolutely. Yeah. Don't be just a- sit down, be honest, tell them exactly what's going on. I've done this before. Now, the, the the short periods of time I did work for you know for corporate companies, I did ask for raises a couple times, and I would list all the things that I value. I would be very honest. Say, look, here's what I like about working here. I like working out. I like working with you guys. You're good people. I like the location. It's close, good to my close to my house. I like the benefits. Um, but you know, pay is also very important, and pay is probably one of the most important because I have a family to support. And here's what the offer looks like from this other place. And they're not as close, and I don't know the people, but they seem nice. But they're going to pay me so much more. If if you guys could match this, I'd have no reason to go anywhere. I want to stay here. Right, right. And that's a lot of power, and well, you'll probably get what you want. Oh, 100 percent. Well, don't fool yourself though either. Like if you're if no one else is a- offering you shit, you ain't that good. Yeah, that's it. You know, yeah. just don't. I mean, you get. I get that a lot too. Where these, oh, I want more money. Well, yeah, you sorry. might get fired. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> if no one else is offering you a yeah, job, you ain't out. that good, dude. You're getting paid market value, like Sal says. I mean, it's literally yeah, what yeah. you. Like, you know, I have been thinking about this. That's yeah. it. Uh oh, that's it. Hey, this month Maps Performance is fifty percent off, but you got to use the code Green Fifty. That's how you get the fifty percent off. Go to MindPumpMedia.com. Enroll in Maps Performance. It's the Maps program for functional, athletic, muscle building, and fat loss. Green fifty is the code. Also, if you go to mindpumpfree.com, we have free guides that can help you in all kinds of areas, and they don't cost anything. You can learn how to build your legs, your chest, your calves, your arms. You could get a flat stomach. You can learn fat loss. We have a back pain guide now, which is even good if you have any back pain. Mindpumpfree.com. Get one or get all of them. Thank you for listening to Mind Pump. If your goal is to build and shape your body, dramatically improve your health and energy, and maximize your overall performance, check out our discounted RGB Super Bundle at mindpumpmedia.com. The RGB Super Bundle includes Maps Anabolic, Maps Performance, and Maps Aesthetic. Nine months of phased expert exercise programming designed by Sal, Adam, and Justin to systematically transform the way your body looks, feels, and performs. With detailed workout blueprints and over 200 videos, the RGB Super Bundle is like having Sal, Adam, and Justin as your own personal trainers, but at a fraction of the price. The RGB Super Bundle has a full 30-day money-back guarantee, and you can get it now, plus other valuable free resources at mindpumpmedia.com. 
If you enjoy this show, please share the love by leaving us a five-star rating and review on iTunes and by introducing Mind Pump to your friends and family. We thank you for your support, and until next time, this is Mind Pump. <laughs>